I swear I'm going to just begin my comments here is with that quote that Roger put up earlier um, from Roger, uh, Robin Sylvester, the port CEO, which is just um, staggeringly, you know, ignorant, I suppose, yeah. but, but also gives you a really, it, I think it's, it's, it's telling and it's sort of helpful that we have this because it gives us a real clear insight into the way that the minds uh, are operating of the people that are making decisions on our behalf right now. And you hear a lot in the media today from this government about jobs. Everything is about, we're supposed to get out potentially up to seven new LNG plants on the coast to ship oil and gas from the already extraordinarily exploited Northeast to, to Asia to open up a whole new market, a whole bunch of new mines, et cetera, uh, to be fast-tracked through. One of the quotes I wanted to say, this is, comes from Christy Clark just the other day. I'm tired of hearing people say, no, I don't want that development. No, I don't want those trees cut down. No, I don't want that mine. No, I don't want that well drilled. This is, she, this is inconvenient for, for our government here. This is, uh, you know, the kind of mentality that we, this is what Kevin Falcon, the transportation minister at the time the Gateway Project was presented, had to say. The Chinese don't have the labor or environmental restrictions we do. It's not like they have to do community consultations. Uh -huh. They just say, we're building a bridge, and they move everyone out there and get going within two weeks. Could you imagine if we could build like that here? <laughs> <laughs> Now, now the, he, this was potentially said in jest, but the irony was that while he was saying this, 50 people were being arrested at Eagle Ridge Bluffs mm -hmm. and hauled out of the way of, including one woman named Harriet Nahani, who's an, an elder of the Squamish Nation, who was murdered by this government. And I, I feel quite confident in saying that. Her counsel presented, uh, she was asked to all, give an apology for standing on her own land. Uh, in, in defiance of this project that would have destroyed a critical ecosystem at Eagle Ridge Bluffs. She told the court, I was there when she, when she told Madam Justice Brenda Brown that you have no jurisdiction over my unceded territory or my right to protect it. And uh, her doctor submitted evidence that she was uh, ill and frail and that she should not be incarcerated. They disregarded that, sent her to Surrey Pretrial Center. She contracted pneumonia within a few days. They waited two weeks to send her to St. Paul's Hospital, hospital where she died. Uh, a few days later. So I, I, I guess what I want to just challenge here is we, we hear about this, this jobs versus the environment, mm -hmm. which is a false dichotomy. In the words of Bill Reese, the founder of the Eco Footprint concept, who's one of my mentors and has been a contributor to a lot of the work that we've done uh, ideologically, um, he said the, the only place that the economy and the environment are separate is in the human mind. Is the economy, uh, far from being actually equal to the environment, is a subsidiary of the environment because we're, all we're talking about here is natural capital, all, all these natural resources that we depend on for our jobs. And what we're choosing here, I would submit, we, we have a choice. We stand at a crossroads right now and, and the, the decision to build Delta Port to say that farmland has no food security value in BC when we produce far less than half of our own food. When in two days, if truck startups stopped rolling across the border from Mexico and California, we would be running out of food at Save On Foods and Safeway. That's, that's called a, t a strategic food reserve. I remember when the wa we had a water problem here a few years ago in the Capilano Reservoir, a boil water alert. That was all. It wasn't a big panic. People were fighting, literally physically fighting with each other at Safeway and Costco when the pallets of water came in, mm -hmm. uh, hoarding. And, 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 you know, really losing all sort of rational uh, way of dealing with each other in a community. We face that very type of situation here. It's very real. Uh, and not only that, but it, agriculture is a very important part of our economy here. It's the number one job creator and economic driver in, in Abbotsford and Chilliwack. Uh, this is, it, it is a very important part of the economy in Delta. The idea that you would make that sort of a statement uh, is, you know, I think shows a profound ignorance for, and also for the lack of the business case, as Roger has uh, so eloquently laid out here. There is no real justification for this container volume. I, I guess they're not reading the same newspapers that I am that say that every day there's a new crisis in Greece or Italy or Portugal, the Eurozone, we, we double dip, triple dip recessions, et cetera. Uh, port volume, container capacity has not grown since 2007. It's identical, is that right, Susan? Almost like with 0.1% difference. And so, if these people think that we're going to go back to those heydays on top of the fact we've expanded the Panama Canal as being expanded now and Long Beach and Los Angeles put $13 billion investment in their upgrading their port for the same reasons we're talking about here ostensibly and all these other things Rogers brought up, there is no business case 
for this port. There is a profound business case and community case for being able to grow in our own food and feed ourselves. And uh, I, I asked former Premier Mike Harcourt, uh, who I thought might be an ally in this issue, a few about four years ago at the Union of BC Municipalities, and I asked him about this South Fraser Perimeter Road. And, and what he thought about this, uh, you know, industrialization of Delta, and his, his answer shocked me. He said, "Full disclosure, I was a direct, I'm a director, or I was a director of the Port Authority." Oh. But he said, um, "Delta, Vancouver is a port city, and we've always, our economy has always thrived on importing and exporting." raw goods and materials out. and Delta is just the the heart of that industry of the lower mainland what he was saying in code was you know what I interpreted from that is Delta is and always has been the industrial armpit of Western Canada the lower mainland and I had it was funny to me because not funny it was tragic to me because I had just been visiting with Hazel Norum who's who was 87 years old at the time and Sig Iverson who was 93 years old Hazel since passed away who, who built that community, uh, you know, were pioneer families, fishing and farming families, uh, who have streets named after them, who gave land to BC Hydro and the uh, uh, Water Authority to put pipelines through, to power through to the community, who literally were the founding members of that community, and to hear them wondering what was going to happen to their homes and their families when the, and when the whole family lived on the same street and they had no information from the government. Meanwhile, a uh, gentleman, uh, one, just one example, a lawyer who does a lot of business with the Liberal government, heavy donor to this, two weeks before the South Fraser Perimeter was even announced had sold off at a $2 million profit in less than a year, a, a piece of property around Burns Bog. Mm -hmm. Well, these people are waiting uh, years to find out whether they're going to have a home to live in or not. And, and so I guess the question for me is whose economy and whose benefit are we talking about here and what kind of a future do we really want to have? I think when, when I also read, you know, the, some of the top energy economists in the world who I think are, are in, of an independent mind today, such as Jeff Rubin, he used to be the, the uh, head of, uh, head, chief economist for CIBC World Markets and wrote a book called Why Your World is About to Get a Whole Lot Smaller. And what he would argue is that the answer to our environmental and uh, economic problems are one and the same, which is relocalization. It is the antithesis of globalization mm -hmm. and expanding globalization, which is what this port is all about. And all the orca and salmon impacts and Burns Bog and the Fraser River and the birds and the species at risk and the indigenous rights and ancient artifacts and human health and climate change and farmland and food security and traffic and noise pollution, all these impacts we've heard about tonight are simply symptoms of one simple choice, which is do we want to continue along this path of industrialized, growth-based, uh, you know, go uh, globalized economy, or do we want to start doing what some of the world's top thinkers who have looked at the numbers of where our oil supply and our ability or lack of ability to continue this profligate energy, profligate lifestyle, uh, where they suggest we should be going, which is to start rebuilding local manufacturing, growing our own food, that, what does that do that creates jobs for people? Mm -hmm. When the TFN open up a piece of their land to Walmart and Home Depot, and let me tell you what a foreign trade zone is. A foreign trade zone or a free trade zone or whatever you want to, euphemistic language you want to use, is a magical, happy fairyland for corporations where there are no environmental regulations, no labor laws, no accountability. It's, it, it is no duties or taxes or anything. So again, whose economy? This is so people can take stuff from Mexico or China or wherever they want around the world, pretend like they've never entered this place called Canada mm -hmm. with all our laws, assemble them in factories and ship them off somewhere else without ever leaving a trace of any money or jobs here in Canada.